Uh, that an organisation as highly respected as the Red Cross should describe our NHS as facing a humanitarian crisis is absolutely shocking, and it points to the heart of this government's failure to provide a reliable, properly resourced National Health Service free at the point of need. It should be a source of shame for this government. Reports last week that two patients died on trolleys and corridors, one having waited 35 hours to be seen, are truly shocking. Could this really be the face of the NHS in England in 2017? Under the Tories, it seems it is. The Health Secretary responded by suggesting that the four-hour target should only apply to the most urgent cases and that it was estimated that 30% of patients in A&E didn't really need to be there. In other words, he blamed patients and suggested a downgrade of the service. He should hang his head in shame. Yeah. Is this Tory government that has decided decided to cut the funding to the health service, asking it to make savings of £22 billion. In Cheshire and Merseyside, the NHS has to find savings of a billion pounds. Wirral CCG calculates a £12 million deficit for the year 2015-16, <laughs> nearly a third higher than the original £9 million forecast. But NHS England has asked them to maintain the forecast at £9 million, and I would be interested to hear why this curious request has been made. Patients in Wirral West are concerned about the impact that these savings or cuts will have at Arrow Park Hospital and in general practice, and they are right to be concerned. The biggest financial squeeze in the history of the NHS is putting services at risk. So let's be clear, there is nothing inevitable about these Tory cuts. It's a political decision and it's being used to drive through changes, including the introduction of accountable care organisations, borrowing a model from America where they're used to deliver private insurance-based health care. An NHS manager from my constituency has written to me saying the SDP and national policy are currently pushing for a redesign of services, primary care at scale and move to make system-wide organisations. The real punchline is there is no funding to make these changes. They go on. Locally, there is talk about an accountable care organisation for Wirral, with meetings of senior managers across health and social care being held on almost a weekly basis to create a roadmap to do this, with no money to do it with. Having fragmented services and finally recognised the failure and destruction caused by the faux internal market in the NHS, they are now making services, to services use what pitiful resources they have to try and put it all back together again. I truly despair there will not be an NHS this time next year. What a stark warning and damning indictment on the government's failure. The Secretary of State should be addressing the crisis by giving the NHS and social care the funding that they need to make up for the crisis of the government's own making around access to GP appointments, failure to train enough nursing staff, failure to fund social care, cuts to community pharmacies when communities need them most. I have long been aware of the Tories' agenda for the privatisation of the National Health Service, seen in the 2012 Act, which opened it up to the private sector so yeah, private right. profit hungry com companies can cherry pick they want to deliver and allowing NHS hospitals to give half their beds to private patients. Yeah, yeah, I believe that true. this and previous Tory governments seek to move us to a two-tier system where those who can yeah. afford it pay private health insurance and the rest are left with a bargain basement NHS. Yeah. The arc of NHS history during the Tories' time in office since the Thatcher period shows this and we now appear to be reaching the end game. The government is cutting the supply of health care in the public sector to create demand in the private sector. That the Secretary of State may believe in an ideological drive to introduce a system where the individual pays their own way through individual private insurance, well, of course, he's entitled to that view. But it's an entirely different concept to that of the National Health Service, of which we on these benches are so proud. And what's more, he must be honest about it. And in the process of trying to transfer us to that two-tier insurance-based model, did he not pause to think about the human suffering he would unleash in the process, with patients waiting for hours on trolleys, anxious relatives waiting helplessly as they, as they, they watch what's happening, and dedicated staff stressed out day in, day out? Now is the time for a decision. The government can review its approach, and it's not too late. It can face the facts and admit to itself that actually... English people want a state-managed, state-funded National Health Service free at the point of use, paid for through direct taxation, just as created by the Labour government with such vision after the Second World War, which became the envy of the world. The government should swallow its ideological pride and say, OK, we get it, we'll fund the National Health Service. Anything less is a betrayal of all the NHS stands for. Yeah. Yeah.